Hey, well, welcome back. And here I am finishing up uh, just a brief encouragement on some simple Bible study tools that makes the scripture a part of your life and allows you to, to engage with it instead of just read it or write about it to let it become living and active inside of you. And there is scripture to that effect, which I had written down on another piece of paper. The Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder, the soul and the spirit, the bone and the marrow, the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So when you think about it, you're reading a scripture, and all of that is happening at the same time. It's stunning. So if you just take the scripture at surface value, you're missing at least three other levels. Plus, then you throw the Holy Spirit in there, who knows you well, and who is advancing you in your authority and your maturity in the Lord. And He will have other suggestions. He will pinpoint how to interact with that in a particular area of your life. So it's wonderful. Holy Spirit's work is just so wonderful. Uh, indeed, he is the one that searches all things, even the depths of God. So, uh, tool number three, the first was read the scripture as for what it actually says. And number two is take ownership of what you just read. Own it. Make it yours. Flip it so you are in the story. Flip it so that you are the main voice. Those are just some examples. And tool number three is receiving from Scripture. Our text again is Matthew 6, 9 through 11, which is the Lord's Prayer. And in AA groups or Al-Anon groups or Narcotics Anonymous groups or Overeaters Anonymous groups, all over the world, they use the King James Version of our Lord's Prayer to close their meetings. There is power in the Lord's Prayer just as it is in the words as they exactly are, which to refresh your memory if you and mine, <laughs> says, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us, Lord, of our, our debts or trespasses, depending on your version as we forgive those who owe us or have trespassed against us. Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So tool number three, receiving from the scripture. That's where you really dial back and you engage with the Holy Spirit of the Lord inside of you. We, our bodies, are temples of the Holy Spirit. So he is dwelling inside of you. And Jesus himself also said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So you got a two for one there. And Father, of course, is immediately available and with you at all times, even down to the frequency of your voice and your being. Okay, so back on topic. Receiving from the Lord's Prayer. Okay, the first two words, our Father, you've already owned it my Father, receiving from that would, might look something like this. Father, is there any place in my life that I have thrown up a wall and resisted you as my Father? Any place where I have blocked you out and said, mm -mm, no, don't, just don't. Don't be a Father to me like that. Don't think you're going to set boundaries, rules, and limitations on my life because I'm a grown-up and you made me to be a grown-up, you know, all the arguments we get into. But ask, ask, engage with the scripture and receive from it. Is there, is there a way that I can receive you more into my life as Father? How can I receive you more as my Father into my life? And I'll just share a short story with you that really impacted me very powerfully <clears throat> right after August of 88, when I got baptized, filled, utterly, absolutely, fi fantastically changed by the invasion of the Holy Spirit. Always had loved Jesus. I'd been 
engaged to him, so to speak, when I first saw him as a six-year-old. And I gave my life to the Lord when I was eight. And from that moment on, there was um, exhibitions of the fruits of the Spirit coming out of me, evangelism and so on, different things like that. And I kept walking with him. But when the Holy Spirit came inside and baptized me, just everything changed. That verse, 1 Corinthians 5, 17, that said, Behold, if anyone is in Christ, the old things have passed away. Behold, all things are made new. It, it was exactly like that. It was like, I know I was alive the day before, but I was alive on a whole different level when that happened that day. <clears throat> I don't know why I have your voice, but I do. <clears throat> Maybe because I haven't talked that much today and I need more water, possibly. But anyway, side note, that's like Lance Wall now, now fidgeting with his hair. So, <clears throat> so anyway, um, the story about uh, Father. I was crazy in love with Jesus and, ha Jesus and had been for a long time. So uh, we were walking together in heaven uh, over the hills and stuff. And just over a ridge, I could see... <clears throat> father on his throne and I was petrified I was terrified I went to hide myself in Jesus like you know like a little kid when you go you just bury your face in your parents chest to hide and it was the first time Jesus ever got mad with me it was a very gentle kind of mad but he was irritated he said no I did not give you that tool to hide from father I came to reconcile you to Father. And I'm like, so I peeked out and I looked over there. And as I watched, there was Father. He kind of slumped down on his throne, sort of like this. And he took a deep breath because he saw me hide from him. That never makes anybody feel good. When you're coming towards them and they hide, it's like, okay. I thought they were my friend. Maybe today they're not my friend or something. <clears throat> so he slumps back down on his throne, and there are angels standing at both sides of the throne waiting to do his bidding. And he takes a breath, and he gestures to them and tells them another way, another way to go out and try to reach me. Well, that's all it took <clears throat> was for me to know that he wanted to be in relationship with me. I always thought God the Father was up there with this, like, giant refrigerator, and he's marking down hashtags did this wrong did that wrong did this 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 wrong I thought he is the judge but you know what every judgment against us is under the blood of Jesus that's what Jesus came for to die and be punished for our sins so you know what our refrigerator looks like mm, clean and clear because of the blood of Jesus that's also what makes 1 John 1, 9. If I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. So incredibly vital. It's got to be a daily thing because we do stumble and fall. We are learning to walk out the life and the spirit as he gave it to us, supernatural life, invigorated life, life abundantly and free, he said. I came to give you freedom, life more abundantly. It was for freedom that I set you free. All those things need, need to be ringing true on every level, and sometimes we screw up. Well, what happens when we screw up? We don't go hide and leave it for weeks so that it can manifest in our souls as a wound, so it can manifest as our spirit as a sin, so it can manifest as our body as disease, sickness, and infirmity. No, as soon as we know. As soon as Holy Spirit lights it up, as soon as we feel like, uh-oh, I think that was wrong, we confess our sins and we ask Him, will you forgive me? I just like all day, like this is me all day. Lord, please forgive me that momentary irritation. I felt cranky. I felt a little bit angry. I felt sort of annoyed. Will you please forgive me? Because that's impatience. That's rebellion that's dominating another that's trying to control their life you know there's like a whole hashtag of what all those things also include as far as sin and i say i please forgive me i sin and i repent i turn away from it and he says yes i will forgive you and i go thank you 
please wipe it from my record and please wipe it out of the atmosphere, even the frequencies, so it cannot be lingering and circulating here on the earth to cause trouble. Yeah, we do. We have that kind of power, people. So be careful what you say. Back to my father. He gestured to the angels to go find another way to reach me. Well, all I needed to know was that he wanted to be in relationship with me. And I broke away from Jesus and I ran to the Father and stood at the foot of his throne. I said, you want to be friends? And he looks at me and goes, yeah. And I said, I want to be friends too. Let's be friends. I want to be your daughter. You want to be my father? And he did. And from there on, it's been such a magnificent relationship. He's so My dad is so amazing. Whew. Boy, he is so amazing. Boy, okay. Brings me to tears how amazing he is. So, when you engage with my father, find out if there's any block, if there's any area he would like to be more of a father to you. It's so important, y'all, because fathers, by divine gift and inheritance and in, uh, embedding in the DNA of fathers, our father has given a father a gift of identity. He pulls out and gives you identity like no one else can. That's one of the chief roles of the father in our life, in our families, and a father to us. We'll identify what we're for. And to the extent that you've blocked off Father, our Father, and who are in heaven, from engaging with Him as a Father, your identity is more on slippery sand. The more you allow Him to engage with you as Father, the stronger your identity becomes. And the more you're built, your identity is built on a solid rock. Because when Dad says, you are a teacher, you are a singer-songwriter. You are a gifted intercessor. You are going to turn the world around and are uh, a tide, a uh, world changer tide turner. It resonates in your heart and it's like, that's who I am. Every day and every way, I'm going out to change the world. I'm going to turn the tide. Woohoo! Red tide, red tide. Alabama Crimson Tide or whatever, but I'm just being silly now, but uh, yes, when he's established that as your identity, everything in you synchronizes and lines up with your destiny, with your identity. So take a moment to receive from the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, my Father, how can you be more my Father? So that's just the first two words, y'all. Then you go on to the next little piece, and I'm not going to go too long on this because some of the fun will be excavating with the Holy Spirit on your own as He shows you how He'd like to uh, cause you to receive from our Father, the Lord's Prayer. Oh, I should tell you this too, that uh, Bishop David Evans was sharing a little bit on this, and he was mentioning that his daughter had him wrapped around his little finger. and. Uh, in a certain way, he was sort of a little bit proud of that because she knew him so well as a dad that she knew <coughs> how to get what she wanted. So when she comes toward him, he said, when my baby girl comes toward me with those eyes, I reach for my wallet because I know she knows I am the answer to her need. Then he went on to tie uh, Jesus as elder brother to the Lord's Prayer in this way. He said, it is the duty of the oldest child in every family to come along to the younger brothers and sisters and elaborate for them, illuminate for them, educate them on how to ask for something from mom and dad. Because if you don't know, you're going to get, no, 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 no. No, I can't believe you asked me that time out all kinds of things and so the older brother comes along and says you can't ask mom and dad for something like that here's how you do it so when the disciples asked Jesus how then do we pray he is the older brother said pray like this if you don't know that that's the prayer that always gets answered the prayer by the eldest son uh-huh 
It always gets answered. And for us, what a blessing that he kept it short and sweet and to the point. You pray this every day, you're already in pretty good shape. And then you remember to invoke 1 John 1, 9, if I confess my sins and repent of my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. That's good, good, good. Knowing that the work of the cross already already uh, cleansed you past, present, future, but for these small things, like Jesus said uh, to Peter when he was gonna wash Peter, Peter's feet, Peter said, oh no, don't just wash my feet. What, he's such a passionate guy. Wash my whole body, I don't, you know, I don't want any dirt on me. And Jesus said, Peter, you're clean because of the word the word, the word I have spoken to you. But your feet have been in contact with the earth as you've walked about all day. Only your feet need to be cleansed. So in the same way, 1 John 1, 9 is washing your feet. You've picked up a little dust, walking through the world. It happens. He knew it would happen. And he put a provision in there to take care of it. So God bless you. So <clears throat> I'll take the next little piece as to how you can receive possibly as an example and you seek the Holy Spirit yourself to find out how you should do it. <clears throat> I would love, 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 love for you to comment on this video and let me know some ways that the Holy Spirit spoke to you. I'm excited to learn with you some new ways to receive from the Lord's Prayer. Matthew 6, 9 through 11. Can't tell that I'm a teacher, can you? <laughs> Till turn in your textbooks to Matthew 6, 9 through 11. Anyway, so the next piece is who art in heaven. How do you receive from who art in heaven? Are you flummoxed? Are you unsure? Because it's talking about dads in heaven. So how do you receive from that? How about this? Father, you're in heaven. Can I come up there? I mean, now while I'm living on earth? Will you give me like a bus pass and a guided tour of heaven? Hey, Dad, what's your favorite thing about heaven? What are you doing right now? What do you like the most? You know, when you're just playing around, what do you do? What's it like? Tell me. That's one way that you can receive from that. <clears throat> Find out more about Father and His own. Find out if you can go there while you're still living in your temple and your body on the earth. So anyway, this video has already gone a little bit uh, long, but I invite you to engage with the Lord in that way. Three simple tools. Read the scripture for what it actually says. Number two, two, two. Re uh, take ownership of what you read. It's not just I, Paul. It's I, Dana. It's not just Jesus said, I will say with Jesus, take ownership. And number three, 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 is receive from the scripture. That's where you get in there and you dig deep, you link arms with the Holy Spirit and say, what can I receive from the scripture? How shall I receive from you in this? All right, guys, I hope that this blesses you. And if it does, I hope you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel and drop some comments in there as the Holy Spirit teaches you different ways you can receive, different ways you can own uh, different scriptures. Love you. Bye.